Hey traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Target. They reported earnings uh, today and obviously the stock reaction is less than favorable for the bulls. It's down 5%. It's towards the lows of the day. So it's not like it's bouncing off of it like some other stocks did. All right, so what do we do here? First of all, I think they missed on uh, the expectations and probably they're punishing them mostly for the comp sales. And also I read a headline that... Uh, you know, they had some extra costs because of um, investments in tech, basically, for online sales. All of which would, which is what the street wanted to see, right? They wanted to see the shift to online versus the brick and mortar. Um, but to me, overall, the, the retail brick and mortar story is still not as good as people think it is. Just because they're shifting to online sales, but they're not taking back sales from uh, say um, Amazon so they're just migrating some of the existing traffic from foot to clicks anyway having said that it's a valuation perspective PE I think it's about 16 on a trailing basis so it's not outrageously expensive but if I compare it to Apple which is I think just a little bit over that 19 18 something like that it doesn't seem that cheap right but it's not bloated so it's not like a Chipotle where the PE is outrageous okay so having said that is just an opportunity to buy. So I'm, the fundamentals are not that bad. They're just a little behind the expectations. So eventually, I think management will figure it out. And if the stock market, that's a big if, the stock market itself doesn't fall apart, then this should find footing, but where? So this is the technical aspect of it. All right, so by the way, I used to shop at Target and I haven't walked into a Target in years and I don't know why. I don't have a specific reason. I just, they lost me somewhere along the lines. I do shop still at Walmart and online and Amazon and eBay. So I don't know where Target, where I left Target. I just don't know, but I did. I bet I'm not alone. So here we go. As far as price action, uh, big gap. But uh, it did it from a point of contention, obviously, high, 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 poke, failure, failure, failure. This was uh, a, you know, triple top, so to speak. They say there's no such thing. Um, but where does it find footing? So I look recently, and the other pivot point that I see recently is between 70 and 68. Uh, 70 because they usually overshoot. So if this was the to be the, the bounce area, they overshoot a little bit. They overshoot a little bit. They overshoot a little bit. Uh, but let's say we consider the bottom of the shoot overshoot would be the 68-ish. And this coincides with the breakout point, the neckline from which it broke out back in January. Uh, so we tried and poked and then used it as support. So I expect this part right here to be support, immediate support. So if I own, if I'm short puts thereabouts, I'm not panicking here, especially if I want to own the shares. This is an opportunity for me to own the shares. If I want to deploy new risk and see, okay, where where could it go lower and I want to poke, I'd have to see where that box came from. So I drew this box, so I'd have to zoom out to a weekly candle, and that still doesn't tell me. Uh, the weekly candle is about five years, so I'm looking at five years, and all I can see is that it has been pivot. It's been above it, it's been below it, and here back at it, at the top end of this box, uh, 71 and a half ish to 66 and change so it's been pivot longer than that so I'm gonna go to a monthly candle and this gives us a little bit more this is to the 90s 1990s so it gives us clear uh, perspective all right so this was a pivot point at some point up until uh, 2011 where we were probably asking the same questions and boom they used it as support to go higher uh, they ping ponged here a little bit and then they set a pivot point right here well mind you that they tried that in 08 but then the world collapsed and they tried that again in 2013 and then they failed then finally in somewhere in 2014 late right above support support lost it in 2017 let's see uh 2016 late into a big swoon and then took its time coming back reclaimed it now the question is will it be forward support these are monthly candles so it's a doji candle here meaning indecisive they they loved it they hated it they're somewhere in the middle they don't know what to do with it so it's it's the question is will they be able to use it at the bulls to use it as footing for forward uh support for more upside 
Number one is it's going to need the market's help. This can't happen while markets are falling. That's my opinion. So if markets are not falling, then I consider the the, the next statements that I'm going to say. So 68, 67 still looks like the place where I can place some risk. But if I'm selling puts that I don't really want to commit to right away, I'd probably want to hide below it. But this at least gives me a gauge as to worst case scenario zone. And this would probably include the markets falling because here we have terrible news, supposedly, from the report on comp sales, etc. Um, and there it is. So let's give it another candle just like it. And then another candle just like it. So, you know, this should be support. So if this fails, then this area here should be support. Why do I say this area? 60, if I look left, it has been pivot. Uh, major accident right here. And, uh, um, a, a, you know, a test of it here and another failure. So twice the accident. And then third time the accident and then finally above it and then used the same accident as support lost it and now they could probably so whoever fought over it here they're going to fight over it here that's why you know prior crime scenes uh, as they say become some sort of a congestion so on the way down it's support on the way up it's resistance so i've just found that several levels depends on my timing so if i'm trading for the next few weeks i'll probably be looking inside this box if i'm trading next few months i'll probably be looking down here so it all it's all about um perspective as far as time and personal preference so i just gave you how i look at things number one i look at the uh, what happened the news i look at the fundamentals valuations and then i look at the technicals i never place a trade without the technicals people poo poo them sometimes but they work and they are a uh, consultant that i don't trade without i'm not a, a technical analyst but i do know a few basic ones that serve me very very well and i can put them in plain simple english if you if i don't understand them i don't use them uh, so in this case there's clear price action slash volume i can get more detail than that but i don't want to make this video too long anyway this is my look at target um, doesn't mean that's where it's going i just know the levels and instead of watching ticks i watch levels so if i place it uh, a trade it's based on a thesis and if the thesis still is within my levels of that i know about then i don't panic but if it breaches my levels then obviously my thesis is broken and then i decide what to do with my trade nick signing out if you have any questions you can email me at sellspreads at gmail.com that's sellspreads at gmail.com